hello and good morning <clears throat> now today we will we are on page 138 where we are discussing about the lecture 15 138 where we are discussing about the clostridium species and which we have discussed about the clostridium titani actually this clostridium species is so much important that there is a must one question on your usml section so you have to be uh, very prepared for that actually clostridium titani they are talking about the exotoxin which is the titanospasm that is a protease that <coughs> cleave this rensa cell and block the GABA glycine and cause the spastic paralysis with other feature that is the increased tone of your muscle and paralysis with paralysis that may be must facial muscle contraction like leads to the rhesus sardonicus then is the back extension muscle contraction leads to the opisthotonus tonus and this there is a log jaw the management will be uh, if there is a minor just um, uh, exposure you need to go a booster if it is a major exposure there is a heavy red uh, road traffic accident with dirty wound then you have to consider for the antitoxin yeah that that is immunoglobin as well with if the patient already have a uh, developed the symptom antibiotic plus diazepam as well okay now coming to the colostridium botulinum botulinum is a uh, just a opposite paralysis in comparison with colostridium titani colostridium titani cause spastic paralysis whereas botulinum cause the flaccid paralysis let's go through it colostridium Botulinum is actually a, you know, this is the gram positive bacteria that is a anaerobic one and spore forming one. Okay, so Clostridium botulism produce a heat level toxin that inhibit the acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction, causing botulism. So the main action is the related to acetylcholine. It actually inhibit acetylcholine, and all the action of acetylcholine in your body is now inhibited since there is no acetylcholine in your body or a place where this botulinum toxin is present so you have to understand in, com in contrast to the colostrum titani there was the absence of GABA and glycine which was an inhibitory neurotransmitter here it actually these are the excitatory neurotransmitter you can say but this acetylcholine has a lot of action in your body you know from your pharmacology point of view so if acetylcholine is inhibited then the all the symptoms will develop mainly like a flaccid paralysis and other symptoms will be due to leads to a botulism in babies if a ingestion of spore example honey leads to a disease called floppy baby syndrome and in adults disease is caused by the ingestion of preformed toxin example in the canned food so what happened in asia in south asia actually the people have even in other part of the world there have a tendency to give a baby honey when they are born so they usually help this is a this is the old taboos you can say custom in the society the baby is born they will try to give something sweet and they give us honey that is a natural form from the old days honey was present in the in nature so so what is the problem is that honey may contain this spore of the clostridium botulinum and if spore is there they can survive for a longer and longer period bacteria may die so spore what happen when we ingest that spore comes in our body temperature then it gets germinated and form a bacteria and then release the toxin that is the botulinum toxin and then cause the symptoms they inhibit the corticetylcholine in the baby and leads to the floppy baby syndrome okay Coming to the adult, in adult how the disease occurs? Actually adult disease occur is caused by the ingestion of the free form toxin. Usually if a patient has already like canned food or people not in, I don't know about Nepal or India, but in other part of the world, um, they usually have a tendency of canned food. Means in Nepal and India, there is a very less uh, consumption of this canned food, but in other part of a uh, sea country, there is a tendency to eat this canned food you know everywhere there is a tendency to eat canned food so that canned food may contain this colostridium botulinum spore that gets germinated and then release the toxin and their free form toxin is already present inside that food and what happened the what are the symptoms actually the symptoms develop is uh, symptoms of botulism is we can remember as a 5d that is the <coughs> diplopia 
dysarthria, dysphagia, dyspnea, and descending flaccid paralysis. So the problem is that all the action, acetylcholine actually helps you the muscle contraction, but this absence of this leads to the, all the symptoms like diplopia, dysarthria, dysphagia, then there will be dyspnea, descending flaccid paralysis, and doesn't present with a sensory deficit. This is the one of the distinguishing feature. So a patient is developing the flaccid paralysis, but the sensation, sensory, sensory nervous system, you can say, a sensation of pain, touch, temperature, everything is intact. So there is a muscle power is lost because acetylcholine is not there, but other sensory things are intact. In this way, we can diagnose this clostridium botulinum clinically. So there will be a diplopia, dysarthria, dysphagia, dyspnea, descending flaccid paralysis that doesn't present with the sensory deficit. Now talking about the botulinum is from a bad bottle of food, juice and honey. Treatment, what is will be the treatment? Treatment is the human botulinum hemoglobin, local botulinum toxin A. There are some clinical or say pharmacological use of this as well because this initially i have talked about this botulinum toxin in <clears throat> if you remember in our exotoxin section where we have talked about this colostrum titani and colostrum botulinum so the, we have already discussed about this thing and you can see over here this is the colostrum perfusion streptococcus pyogen exotoxin super then, then there is colostrum botulinum so they are inhibiting the release of neurotransmitter colostrum botulinum botulinum toxin that have the in that cause this infant botulism and foodborne botulism okay so we have already discussed about this is these are the toxin mediated disease actually that is causing us the effect now let's come to the point how we can what are the pharmacological use of this toxin so okay so we are botulinum toxin treatment is human botulinum immunoglobulin sometime this bacteria this toxin itself not its treatment the toxin itself it can be used as a treatment for <clears throat> local botulinum toxin a botox injection used to treat for focal dystonia hyperhidrosis muscle spasm and cosmetic reduction of the facial wrinkle so normally this facial wrinkle other are the pharmaceutical or say you can use this drug like in treatment of the focal dystonia hyperhidrosis muscle spasm but there are very cosmetic use that is very popular you can say or that is a very uh, fancy thing because a lot of supermodels previous queen um, they used to reduce their wrinkles on their face to look young and for that they used to uh, put botox toxin in their face so they can put in their face to reduce the wrinkle and that because of that the acetylcholine is not there and there will be the there is no contraction this is flaccid paralysis and since there is a paralysis it seems that there is lack of people look young there is an absence of wrinkle in this way that we can use this botulinum toxin and a pharmacological use as well there is another term like clostridium perfringens and clostridium difficile but this all are the gram positive anaerobic organism we are discussing and in the clostridium perfringens actually this has two main function one it kills the gas gangrene and another it causes the <clears throat> food poisoning so clostridium perfringens are also gram positive bacteria that is anaerobic one and they produce the alpha toxin lethicinase a phospholipase that can, can cause myonecrosis that is gas gangrene you can see the picture of the gas gangrene over here okay so let me get you clearly so you can see over here they there is the gas gangrene in the patient that has been developed this produce the lecithinase a phospholipase that can myonecrosis thus gas gangrene presents a soft tissue cryptation and hemolysis if heavily spore contamination food is cooked but left standing too long less than 60 degrees celsius the spores germinate vegetative bacteria come heat level introduction develop come into that food and lot late onset food poisoning symptoms will be present so there are the two diseases that is important in point of the clostridium perfringens. One is they develop myonecrosis and leads to the gas gangrene. Another, if the food is heated, but it is less than 60 degree because it is heat level toxin. It is not like a, a staphylococcal enterotoxin or say heat stable E. coli toxin. It is, it can be damaged at 60 degrees Celsius or above. So if any food that is below the 60 degrees Celsius is present there and the spore there comes, then it gets germinated into the bacteria, then release the toxin and then toxin is already there and if you consume that food, then they will develop the food poisoning, enterotoxin. It will go into an intestine, it will activate your entering nervous system and you develop diarrhea and vomiting. The important point is, 
Clostridium perfringens diarrhea and vomiting is called late onset food poisoning. Whereas Bacillus cereus, if you remember the Bacillus cereus, let me correlate over here. This is called early onset food poisoning because here you can see the nausea and vomiting develop within one to five hours. This is also a preformed toxin, exotoxin that will leads to the food poisoning and it will develop nausea and vomiting within one to five hours and then GI pain and diarrhea, non blood diarrhea in 80 to 18 to 18 hours. But in case of clostridium perfringens, it will develop only after 10 hours so it is late than that of the bacillus cereus so that is it makes them important you have to make your differences a patient come in your opd in your emergency and he, he is complaining of this nausea and vomiting after eating a food in a restaurant and that is after 10 hours then you have to understand okay they are they are talking about this clostridium perfringens bug if they are saying okay a patient came from the uh, restaurant eating a uh, uh, food and then come into the home and then immediately they start uh, in one and one and two hours he is they start developing nausea and vomiting and few hours later develop non blurry diarrhea you should ringing that it is they are talking about the bacillus cereals timing is important timing is very important to differentiate the food poisoning between the bacillus cereals and clostridium perfringens group okay so that's all about this and we'll clostridium difficile is a very important all over the world so we'll make a separate uh, revision on that we end the note over here, perfringes perforates a gas gangrene legs. So there will be the picture like this. You have to remember the cholesterol perfringes cause two disease, two type of disease. One is the gas gangrene and another is the food poisoning. The food poisoning that develop is in little late. The symptoms develop little late than the cholesterol. No, no, bacillus cereus. So the early onset is bacillus cereus food poisoning. This is the late onset food poisoning in case of the cholesterol perfringes. And the both are due to the exotoxin, preformed toxin that cause this disease.